I like this screen. Look at all this room. All right, so I'm dragging a third app out onto the screen. I can put it in any of these four quadrants here. Can you hear that? Oh, I can make it transparent. That is awesome. I'm looking straight at the camera and it probably looks pretty natural. It's not off to the side. If this was an iPad, I'd be looking over here. Honestly, it looks really good. I don't have a lot to complain about in terms of the detail department. In fact, it looks great. It looks like it's an Apple Quick Note competitor here. I don't really need to have that icon on the screen all the time though. Hey, it's Chris. People know me as the iPad guy, but you know what? I just like tech. And today I'm checking out the new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8. I've tried really hard not to know anything about this. This unboxing is a pure experience. Just me checking out something new and exciting. Now, get yourself subscribed if you wanna see me compare this to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. That video is gonna be coming up really soon. Now, in terms of specs, this is an upgraded version. It was about 1200 bucks. All right, look at this thing. This is a big box. That's because this is a big tablet, specifically 14.6 inches. Now, I'm a fan of big tablets. I got the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. That's my main tablet right now. And I tweeted out a long time ago, hey, I wish the iPad came in a 16 inch version, even a 27 inch version that just parked on my desk. And just as I'm cutting the tape here, I'm seeing on the box, this comes with the S Pen. That's of course different than how Apple does it. So it's cool to see that that comes with here. And actually I've had a lot of people requesting that I do this unboxing and compare it to the iPad because people are looking for the best tablet out there. They're not just interested in just only one kind. <laughs> oh, wow. It's no joke, this thing, is it? All right, moment of truth here. Whoa, that's one big enchilada. I already have to say, I'm looking forward to checking out this OLED screen, but you know what? There's a notch here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Samsung the one making fun of Apple for having the notch on the iPhone? I remember those commercials. So the iPad definitely doesn't have a notch, but you know what? I'm not gonna make fun of it because the notch doesn't really bug me on the iPhone, and I'm sure I'm really not gonna notice it here either, but that's a nice bright screen. All right, does this pen come prepared? Yes, it does. But you know what, just coming back to this notch here, if these cameras are good, then I really won't mind it. Well, this is interesting, just as I'm getting this set up, this stylus feels way different than the Apple Pencil. And I gotta say, I don't hate it. And the reason is, it's really soft compared to the tip on the Apple Pencil. Oh, you know, I just gotta say, I really like the way that this thing taps on the screen. That's pretty cool. Now, I like it for tapping. I don't know how I'm gonna like it for writing, for drawing, for sketching. We'll get to that. Now, already there was a couple times as I was entering my password when my finger touches didn't seem to register on this on-screen keyboard. This doesn't feel as big as I thought it was going to. I mean, it, it is big. I feel like it's actually not even as wide as the iPad Pro if I'm just holding it straight up and down. <laughs> this is hilarious though, holding it straight up and down. That's really a tall tablet. But it's cool though. One thing I kind of wonder is uh, how much of my palm is going to end up hitting this as I'm just using it. And I'm noticing the three dots down here, smart connector like connection, like my iPad Pro has for hooking up accessories, which is also interesting because Samsung seems to know that I'm going to want to use this mostly in horizontal. That's why it's so long, which means good job Samsung for putting the cameras on what I would consider the top most of the time. The iPad Pro doesn't do that and I don't like that. So good. You know, it feels a little bit heavy right off the bat. It's not the lightest thing, but I wouldn't expect it to be. All right, it's interesting to go through the setup here compared to the iPad. So right now we're gonna do face recognition, fingerprints, pattern, pin, or password. Now this is interesting, right? This thing has an under display fingerprint reader. The iPad doesn't. The question is, does it work well? Because the last time I ran into one of these on an Android phone, I didn't end up using it or liking it because it just didn't work that good. We're gonna register the face here. All right, it's scanning. It likes what it sees. Well, it's loading, I just gotta say, I think I'm gonna get along with this S Pen pretty good. It feels kind of like a smaller Apple Pencil. Now, if I'm correct, this S Pen can magnet onto the top here, yes, but it's not gonna charge there from what I understand, or it can magnet onto the back, like right here and what, where does it go? Why does it not want to sit here? Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, on the back, that's a weird place for me to put the S Pen, honestly. You know, I guess it doesn't really get in the way, but it feels like it's just gonna get knocked off there. Maybe more so than the sides? Maybe not. I would probably just end up keeping it on top, although it's kind of annoying. You have to know how you're gonna mount it. It only really goes one way. And I'll just say too, like this is a nice 
build. I mean, Samsung does have nice hardware. The feel of it feels premium, looks very different than an iPad, that's for sure. But I still see the antenna lines here. We still have a camera bump on the back. So I don't know how much that's gonna affect when this is down. Actually, there's no wobble. Absolutely no wobble, that's cool. I like that the bezel's pretty thin. In fact, it seems a little bit thinner than the bezel on the iPad Pro. And I'm dying to hook up a keyboard to this. They didn't have it in the store. I know the pre-order has been going like crazy. So I actually got a $100 gift card when I picked this up at Best Buy and I'm gonna put that towards the keyboard, I think. So I can actually do a full good productivity comparison. Cause you know what I'm looking forward to the most. I was just on the Apple Insider podcast and I was asked, what's one thing I want for the next version of iPad OS? And I said, I wanna be able to see three apps on the screen at a time without having to use slide over. And I know I can do that here. And that's a big deal for me. Ooh, this is nice. Look at all this room. Now, the first thing I have to do is go into settings and try out this fingerprint reader. All right, so I'm gonna add a fingerprint here. So where's the scanner? Oh, there it is, okay. That's nice and, and comfortable. You know, so Apple has built Touch ID into the button on some of their iPads, but this is actually nicer, I think, because this is just how you naturally grip it and hold it. Oh, it doesn't like my fingerprint though. Well, it's nicer assuming that it can actually scan my fingerprint in. <laughs> there we go. Done. Now I gotta try unlocking this. Ooh, ooh, I like this screen. That's really cool. I like the shortcuts. Okay, let's, what? All right, here we go. Hey, that works. It worked the first time. Let me try it again. It all depends on how well it works consistently, so. Oh yeah, it seems pretty consistent, fast, I like it, honestly. All right, you know what I need to try first? I have to, it's the multitasking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Chrome. I'm going to open up my recents and uh, let's see, I'm gonna do Chrome and the Play Store. So I'm gonna do open in split screen view. All right, there we go. Let me get Chrome going, there we go. And all right, I got two things going and I should be able to drag those around. That's somewhat fluid. It's uh, it's more adjustable than the iPad, for sure. And then, you know, this pop-out window, that's pretty cool too. It's sort of like the iPad slide over, except you can move it wherever you want. Oh, I can make it transparent. That is awesome. I haven't figured out how to do three apps on the screen at once, but I did figure out that I can switch the apps, the position, I guess that's interesting. Whoa, that's interesting. So horizontal split screen, that's pretty cool. I can flip that around. That's definitely not something that my iPad does. I probably wouldn't use that as much, but I mean, it's cool, it's different. Options are good. All right, so split screen multitasking, cool, but for all the marbles, what is it like with three apps open at a time? So one thing that's kind of cool here is that I get this edge panel, which I don't get on the iPad. All right, so I'm gonna drag this out. Ooh, all right, so I'm dragging a third app out onto the screen. I can put it in any of these four quadrants here. This is exciting. This is not possible on my iPad. It's something I've been asking for, not exactly in this format, but let me drop it in. There it is. This, I got Notes, the Play Store, and Chrome open. Three things on the screen at once without slide over. This is cool. And then you know what? Can I rearrange that? Yes, I can. This is getting cooler by the minute. That is kind of ultra, isn't it? You wouldn't think so, because it seems like a no-brainer to have that in your tablet three apps on the screen at once, but if the iPad doesn't have it, it's basically ultra to have it just by default. The other thing that I have to test right off the bat is this S Pen. You know what? It's been years. I mean like three, four, five years since I went hands-on with a Samsung tablet. So I don't know what this is like. So I'm opening up the Notes app. I get two different options, individual pages or infinite scrolling page. Definitely gonna go with the infinite scrolling page. Okay, I'm getting a little tutorial here. I don't need it, I don't want it. I just wanna figure it out on my own. Hey, it's Chris. I don't know if you heard that, but it's making sounds. I don't like that. Can you hear that? That's not cool, I don't like that. It's too faux, it's too phony, fake. I really do like the writing experience. So it appears like it'd be great for handwritten notes. I will say that. But again, I'll do some more testing. So if you really want to see me go more in depth, give you my opinion after I've actually been using it for a while, then stick around. Let's see if it does perfect shapes like the iPad does. If I just hold this in place. Yeah, perfect shapes built right into the Notes app here. That's nice. I appreciate that. What about arrows? I always like the arrows. 
Ooh, gave me a perfect line, but not a perfect arrow. All right, so what I've done is I've opened up Tayasuki Sketches. I think that's the app, because I want to see how this works for like doing art and stuff. And one thing I just noticed before I actually get into any sketching is that there's a little bit of lag when it comes to pressing stuff. Sometimes it doesn't press. Do you see this? It doesn't always press what I'm after. It does most of the time, but it's almost like there's some lag. Look at it. It doesn't always register when I'm trying to tap on a tool. That's unfortunate. All right, but let me just do uh, some basic sketching and just kind of see like, what do I think in terms of the sketch department? I don't like the sketching as much as I do the iPad Pro. Look, I'm not a pro artist, okay? So don't read into this too much, but, but honestly, just uh, the way that this feels, and of course I don't have a paper like on here like I do on my iPad, which really helps. The friction, it, it's not there. The soft tip is good for writing. I think it's great for writing actually for handwritten stuff. I just don't really love it in the sketching department. It feels like it's actually just optimized for doing things like handwriting and tapping rather than the tip, you know, for sketching. So for artists out there, I think the iPad sketching experience just in the first, you know, impressions here seems like it's better, but the handwriting is probably about on par. If not actually nicer, I really like the way this tip works for handwriting. One thing I wanna check out here is the screen. So I'm gonna play a 4K HDR video, even though I don't even think this is a 4K screen. It is an OLED screen. That means you're gonna get really dark, deep, inky blacks, which is good. The colors should really pop. There should be a lot of contrast. One thing I know here is that it doesn't get as bright as you would expect for an ultra device. Um, so that nit rating is you know, not quite what you'd wanna see. I'm seeing a ton of detail. That's nice. Things are really flowing because you got that 120 Hertz uh, display going here. So nice refresh rate. And honestly, it looks really good. I don't have a lot to complain about in terms of the detail department. In fact, it looks great. I would tell you it looks great. There's really honestly nothing to complain about in terms of how this looks. Now we'll get it side by side with the iPad Pro in the comparison video so we can really dig into where the differences are. But you know, when you don't have two devices just sitting side by side right next to each other, then you don't really notice that stuff. You're just like, what's in front of me and how does it look? And this is in front of me and it looks really, really nice, really enjoyable. Because obviously with this aspect ratio and this wide screen here for a tablet, that's one of the main things here is being able to watch some content on here. And it looks like that's gonna be really good. Let's get a load of the speakers while we're at it. Okay, I got some royalty free music going. You probably hear it. You know, it's not like the bass really punches, but could you expect it to, you know, for the, the thin size here? I will say it sounds good. You know, if you're gonna watch some content without any earbuds, then you're still gonna be able to hear it, enjoy it, absorb it. Well, I can't tell you right now if it's better or not than the iPad Pro. I assume some people are going to be interested in gaming on here. Now there's a little tablet icon here and that's annoying that it's right in the way. Oh, but look, it looks like it's an Apple Quick Note competitor here. Smart select. All right, so what, if I'm in any screen, I can just come in here and create a note no matter where I'm at. That's nice, you know, that's a little bit Apple-like there. That's cool, and then what, just get rid of it like this? Okay, so it's sort of like Apple's Quick Notes. I don't know who came first, and it doesn't really matter. It's just, does it work? If you have an idea, you wanna jot it down, just tap on the pen here, but it's a two-step process. Uh, but you can create a note, you can view your notes, you can just uh, screen write. There's live messages, AR doodle, so, okay. So, you know, this does a lot. I don't really need to have that icon on the screen all the time though. So that's kind of annoying. I do prefer Apple's drag from the corner to open up a quick note. Wow, there's like no anti-aliasing going on at all. It's fluid, it's smooth, so that's good, but man, I think I need to try a different game. This is just terrible. Wait, airport security? Seriously? That's the top game right now? <laughs> Why, who's playing this? Well, I'm gonna have to do some more research on the game front because I feel like I'm having a hard time finding anything worth playing. But uh, you know, this screen deserves a good game to play on because it's a nice screen. One thing I'm interested in is the camera. So let's flip this around. All right, so I'm recording a video. Can you see this? Um, this is actually pretty good quality, I feel like. We'll see what it looks like. There's not a stabilization as far as I know, so it might be kind of jittery, but if you had this on just a stand, it'd probably look all right. Now here's the thing, I'm looking straight at the camera 
and it probably looks pretty natural. That's because Samsung did this camera placement really well. It's natural, it's not off to the side. If this was an iPad, I'd be looking over here and you'd be like, what square is looking at? Why isn't he paying attention to me? But right now it looks like, hey, we're actually communicating, right? And that's nice, I like this. All right, watching it back, it's good, it's not amazing. It has some weirdness going on with some digital stabilization or something and the lights kind of flipping out in the back, but the face looks pretty good. And probably that's what matters when you're trying to communicate with somebody, right? All right, I'm gonna have to play around with this. I'm excited about it. I'm going to snag that keyboard. And the thing that really interests me here that I'm actually gonna explore the most in the comparison, aside from the hardware, is just the productivity. Which device, this or the iPad Pro, can I get the most done with? What one has the most fluid workflow for me? Other than that, I think that's a wrap. Thanks for checking this video out. Let me know your comments down below. And also make sure to leave me a message with all the stuff you want me to test and compare between this and the Pro. Ultra versus Pro. It's gonna be a good video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.